There you are, live. We're one minute early. Oh my goodness. That's planning ahead is what that's called. Well, welcome everyone. Let's uh, chat about fishing and hunting and outdoors. Ideas, places to go, things to do, fish to catch, uh, varmints to trace, and uh, relationships with our families and the outdoors. Uh, it's my pleasure to tell you that uh, uh, you can read my outdoor column now on um, a number of newspapers, Lake Lanier, Lifestyle, and papers all over uh, Dawson County, Pickens County, and all over. And uh, I hope you, if you are able to read some of those, that you'll enjoy them. It's not about how to go fishing. It's not about where to go fishing. It's about the people and places that you meet, the places that you go uh, when you're in the outdoors. So uh, we've been hard at it all day. I hope you have too. You earn a living. Well, sometimes I think I do, sometimes not. But uh, we will have toward the end of the show. Be sure and uh, join us because I have a a Works Tools reciprocating saw to give away. But you have to be on the air with me. This is the way this thing works. Look at this. See, it's a saw. The good people at Works Tools, Works Tools, uh, they gave those, uh, gave one of me one of those things. They give them to me to give to you. Uh, I did some videos today for Works Tools, and every time I use them, uh, I appreciate them more uh, because I was thinking today about what wonderful things I could say about Works Tools and the idea of. Uh, using a, a battery-powered lawnmower, for goodness sakes, or a power saw or a blower, or a power washer, and on and on and on. And I happen to think today, I've been using this stuff for 10 years. I've never had a single product fail. Nothing's ever stopped working. Nothing ever needed to be repaired. Anyway, enough about that. You see, I've got on my Conus hat. It's time to start thinking about the fall hunting season. Are you in it? Well, you need to familiarize yourself with deer, deer bedding areas, routes, food serve, uh, sources, that is food service, food sources, and on and on and on. And so welcome everyone, and we'll chat about those things. And so many other things, I did a, a, uh, some videos today and I came up with a couple of tips, maybe, that I haven't told you about before, uh, that, my goodness, random. Uh, we had a, an accident at Lake Lanier. We'll call it an accident because I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. But uh, people were injured. There was a fire at a, uh, pardon me, at a uh, marina. And it caused me to think about and want to mention to you that if your boat, if you don't use your boat very often, I know a lot of people just, you know, they're in it every other day. If you're not using the boat very often, maybe it's in dry storage, maybe it's in storage at the marina, whatever the case might be. One of the things that you want to be sure and check on often and I don't know if this has anything to do with what happened at Lanier this week that got some people hurt, but it made me think of it. Check your fuel lines, the junction of all your fuel lines, the bulbs that you use outboard, you know, you'll use a bulb to pump the fuel. Make sure the connections are good, the rubber and the pumps are working properly, uh, nothing's dried out or cracked or might be leaking uh, because that's some of the bad things that could happen. And uh, in doing all those videos today, <laughs> it's kind of funny, in doing the uh, producing some of the videos today, they're called Works Fishing Tips or Works Outdoor Tips. And uh, you'll see them on Works and Facebook and my website and on and on and on. Okay. Somebody suggested that you show how that saw opens up. Oh, okay. 
See this little button right here? Can you see that? I, I can't see because people are, and, it, and it, it'll, I have to do it with the other hand. When you push this button and turn it up, it becomes a saw like that. You turn this blade over and you can cut like this, you can cut like that, or you push the button and it can collapse to a saw like this, like a jigsaw. How about that? <laughs> Some people are so smart to make things. Uh, where was I? Oh, okay. A funny story, I think. Uh, it's we go fishing so often, we come, we become rote, if you will, about what to do, uh, the safety precautions, tips, and so on. But I'll tell you what happened to me one day, because I'm going to give you a tip that you'll think, why bother that? Okay, it's this. Be sure and check that the plug, the drain plug, is in the boat. Huh? Yes, be sure and check that the drain plug is in the boat. Why would you forget that? Well, let me tell you. Uh, I was in a tournament many years ago, and gosh, it must have been 130, 140 boats in the tournament. And we, we used to draw for the for the partners, and I drew a guy, a, a, you know, a laughable guy, fun guy, and we had known each other a bit crossing paths in tournaments. So, uh, I back in, uh, I get somebody else to bump me off and they and go park the car, park the truck. Okay, they were doing that. They have guys at these tournaments who do that. And I, pff, we, you know, put the troll motor down, drift out into the lake, getting ready for the blast off. And all of a sudden I look down and my feet are wet. I forgot to put the plug in. So my comical partner says, we're going down. We're going down. And he got so excited that he put his life jacket on upside down while we were waiting. He put his life jacket on, put it on upside down. It's way up high around his head. So I didn't know anything else to do except the following. I motored back over to the ramp quickly Somebody else put their boat in, and uh, I opened my big mouth and said, Hold up right there! And I drove my boat up on their trailer. <coughs> and pull up a little bit, so I let this thing drain. <laughs> so that was my experience. So I have even left the plug out of the boat. Of course, I'm absent-minded dodo bird anyway, so... Uh, uh, I I think that's the only time I did that. Now, I, I will say this one time. I went to the lake with a new boat many, many years ago. I went to the lake with a new boat to try it out. It was a new bass boat. I put the boat in, and I couldn't get it cranked. It wouldn't crank. You sit there and grind and grind and grind. I failed to hook up the uh, kill switch. It worked just fine as soon as I hooked up the kill switch. So, uh, yeah. One guy says here on the list, he says he buys CVA muzzle loaders and power belt bullets because he saw them on the show. Thank you very much. The power belt bullet is the best muzzle loading bullet ever created in the last 15, 20 years. It's a, it was made by a fellow. His name is Mike. What's his name, honey? Mike. Power belt bullet. Mike. Mike Michael. My, my, his, his, I think his parents must have stuttered. His name is Michael McMichael. Awfully nice fellow. Inventive. He was a carpenter and an inventor and a smart guy. And he invented of the power belt bullet. So what? The power belt bullet, unlike what you would call the sabotage or the sabot, which is French for shoe, S-H-O-E, shoe, when the bullet sits in a plastic shoe or a holder, uh, the power belt bullet sits on a piece of plastic that's, f 
So the bullet is full caliber. If it's 50 caliber, it's 50 caliber bullet. If you're a, using a sabotaged bullet that says it's 50 caliber, it's not because the plastic engages the rifling. The bullet does not until it gets way down the barrel. Sure, you're using, instead of a 50 caliber, you're using about a 44 caliber bullet. Use power belt bullets. All right, enough about that. All right, uh, thanks for everyone for watching. If you have questions, criticism, observances, whatever you might uh, like, Gail Williams is here, and she's uh, ready to pass along what you'd like to talk about to me. And I'll either uh, talk about it or I won't. <laughs> Yes, uh, somebody says, uh, Shane, yes, I have uh, survived all that. We uh, historically, uh, well, let me tell you a story. Ready? How about, can I tell the capitalism and youth story? Yeah, ain't got anything to do with those plastic. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, when I was 13 and 14 years old, I had a really good friend, and he still is a good friend. His name was Jeffrey Merrick Hobbins. He would call him Rick. And in the night, he went to a high school, uh, and a different high school, but his dad, we became friends, and his dad was really nice to me, and he was, because my dad was not a fisherman. So they took me when they went to the lake on Saturdays or Sundays or whenever it was available, uh, they had a boat, and they took me. And so I got to go fishing with them. His name was Lynn Hobbins. Nice fellow. It's a long time ago, okay? I was 13, 14 years old. So that we became friends. And on Saturdays in the summertime, Rick and I went to what we call the Dollar Lakes. That's what they were called. Uh, and we fished for catfish or carp. Uh, it, you could pay a dollar, and you could back then you could catch all that, you know, all that you could catch. Well, Rick, I think it was his idea. Rick figured out that if you, if we bought some whole kernel corn, uh, green giant corn niblets or whatever they were. And we cast them out all around out where we were fishing. Of course, we're fishing from the bank at a dollar lake, which is a pond. That it wouldn't take long that, man, we had all the catfish and carp in the lake right in front of us. Well, by, you know, by noon or before, we were just catching them one after another. We thought, why don't we sell these fish? to some other people around the bank. So while Rick managed the rods that were just on little forked sticks that we cut cut out and we uh, and we'd cast out, we used Zebcos and Johnson Centuries. And we would cat we used corn for bait just on a small hook and cast out on the bottom with a slip sinker. And I would go around the lake after these, the lake was heavily populated with fishermen on Saturdays. I would go around the lake and ask people, and i say, if you don't mind, if when the day ends, whenever you decide to leave, if you're not uh, satisfied with what you caught and you need some more fish, we're right on the other side of the lake there and we'll sell them to you. Now, most of the people were really nice to me. They would say, hey, little kid, uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate your offer, but we'll catch our own fish. Okay, that's good. That's good for me, too. Occasionally, uh, somebody would say, get out of here, you little punk. I'll catch my own fish. I don't need you to catch them. Okay, fine. That's fine. Go around. I go back, and Rick and I would sit in the dirt or sit on our little old pile tackle boxes, and we'd catch one after another after another. But before the day would end... I can tell you that people would be standing behind us bidding for the next fish. I'll take the next one. I'll take the next one. Of course, we were selling these fish for 25 cents, 30 cents, maybe 50 cents. So, uh, quite frankly, instead of working for tips at a grocery store at 13 or 14 years old, uh, we would fish on Saturdays, and we would have we would drink RC cola and eat moon pies all day, 
pay for the fishing and we'd each make seven or eight dollars. It's better than working for tips at the grocery store. But was that the start of capitalism? Yes, it was. And funny, isn't it, that Rick spent the majority of his working life with Browning, selling fishing tackle, rifles, shotguns. In other words, he was in the sporting goods business. And you know what I do for a living, so it could be safely said, and reasonably so, that we are still, we have been selling our catch all these years. How do you like that story? Well, okay, that's, uh, that story is in uh, my book. The book is called Odeal Outside, People in Places Along the Way. And you can purchase that at O'NeillOutside.com or on Amazon. If you purchase it off my website, uh, pay directly there. I'll sign it for you, personalize it, whatever you want me to write in it, and I'll send it to you. Shipping is free. Or you can go to Amazon and buy it there. It has a five-star rating. Okay. Uh, <laughs> looking to see what Robert says he's looking to see what bait you're using. Okay. Oh, we were using corn. You throw corn out, attract all the fish with corn, and then you use corn for bait. It was good. It worked. Uh, okay. Uh, Anything going on, baby? Are we ready to finish? I'll stop talking. Uh, I had a question here, and I can't find it. Oh, boy. Remember, stick around now. Oh, I, I, I want oh, some of those blue thumbs. Yeah, and uh, like and share, please. Like, and, like share. and share. Be sure and share this and put some blue lights and things like that up there. That makes me feel blue better. Blue lights? Blue, blue signs or whatever they are. <laughs> <laughs> blue thumbs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Shane Seller says he has your book and he's proud to have it. Well, I'm, I'm proud that you bought it. I really, I, I, I thought that this thing was going to make money. <laughs> it did. Uh, Writing a book doesn't make money unless you're, you know, you're somebody special. Does a buzzard lay eggs or are they born alive? No, they are they lay eggs like all okay. fowl do. Absolutely. Yes, buzzards do lay eggs. Okay. And they, buzzards find their food by smell, not by sight. Most birds... It's by sight. Uh, for instance, the owl, and that's why his two eyes are forward. He has depth vision. A turkey and so many other birds, their eyes are out here. They have wide vision. An uh, uh, owl has his eyes in front. That's how he can get away with hunting at night, and he's really good at it, too. Here's something I think you'll find that's interesting. Uh, jet planes... The jet engines on, at least as far as I know, some time ago, uh, jet engines, the fans, the edge of the fans were copies of the edge of owl feathers. Because when an owl flies through the woods at night on hunting expeditions, he's silent. He flies silently. Other birds, you can, you can hear their wings because of the airflow over the outside of the wings. Jet planes copied the owl signatures, if you will, and they fly silently. How about that? Okay. <sighs> Keith says he used to dig worms and sell them for bait when he was a kid. To make extra spending money. I did that too, but you know what I could get the most money for that was easier than digging worms and selling was to put out cricket traps. You get a big jug, a big one-gallon jug, and put holes in the top of it and put some bread in there or some whole kernel corn, and the crickets will, crickets will go in there to eat the corn, and then they can't find their way out. 
and you can sell those crickets and people will pay big money because if there's a better brim bait than a cricket, there's very few that are better. The crickets are fabulous. And quite frankly, uh, it's, it's kind of funny that when you can go to these trout streams, go to uh, trout streams and very sportingly use a fly rod and catch trout, I guarantee you, you could use a spinning rod with a little red and white cork and a, and a cricket and you could wipe out the stream. <laughs> you know, so, okay. Do you want to tell everybody about not how you don't wear Crocs and go downstairs backwards? Oh, uh, well... Th Just to add a little humor here. This weekend, uh, my oldest daughter, Amy, and her husband, they're going to be moving soon. Uh, and so we were at their home in uh, Walnut Grove, and we were moving furniture and things like that uh, out to the, for a big moving sale. And one of the things that they wanted to move was a, a, there was a small desk and a chair. Be perfect for a little kid. I mean, it's not miniature, it's just small. And so uh, I'll get it. And uh, I, I learned a lesson about it because it's, uh, you don't back down the stairs with a heavy load wearing Crocs. You don't back up very well using Crocs. So I, the, the steps were carpeted, the floors are carpeted. So I turned the desk over. I took the chair downstairs. I turned the desk over, slid it over to the top of the steps, and I thought I would just let it slide down the steps and I would back up slowly till it got to the bottom. I did notice it was a lot heavy, solid wood, old piece of furniture, solid, very solid, and uh, uh, I didn't realize it was as heavy as it was, and it got started down the steps from the top floor, and I got about halfway down and realized you don't back up with Crocs on. So the evidence that I made it to the bottom was the blood on the glass on the front door at the bottom of the steps, a great big knot on my head, uh, a hole in the wall where one of the one of the legs on the desk went through the wall, and I'm lying there and I'm seeing red dots and white specks in front of my eyes. I wasn't knocked out long, but I was out. <laughs> it's not funny. Yeah, and you don't I, I got. Have any skin on your elbow, yeah, that's where I have to wear a long sleeve. I, it took all the skin off my elbow, and my elbow flew up and hit the glass door, the front door, the glass in the back of my head hit the door, and I fell off. And I'm not sure I'm all right so far, really. I'm not either, but I've been wondering that. Well, yeah, I was. I got a lot of questions over the next couple of hours. Uh, after that happened, uh, uh, are you okay? Sure, I'm fine. Do you have any aspirin? <laughs> I'm fine. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Fine, fine. Good. I'm good. I got a well, soft spot right back here. Uh, I wonder, do you when you get knocked out? When you get when you're fighting or something like that? When you get knocked out, do you see colors and things like that? I would imagine so. Because I put, uh, yeah, I know that. Put the straps on the. Well, I'm I put the straps forward on the Crocs. That's one of yeah, the yeah one of the things that you. Those things are dangerous. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. They're, they're dangerous. Yeah. I, I, I got I got knocked out. <laughs> it's been a long time since I got knocked out. I was in high school football one time. I got knocked out, uh, and I went to the wrong huddle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people laughed at me. I got okay in a few minutes, but I, I did go to the wrong huddle. I forgot who we were playing. I think I forgot on purpose. But I tackled the guy, but he hit his knee hit me right in the forehead and knocked me out. 
Is that what knocked you out? I think so. I was I was out. Yeah. I, and I got up and I went to the wrong huddle. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, all you guys are new, aren't you? <laughs> what position do you have that I can play? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, stretcher bearer. Uh, okay, uh, what time is it? Am I wasting everybody's time here? It's 54 minutes after the hour. Be sure and stick around now because uh, we have a remote uh, a person that's remote that's going to pick the winner of the re Axis Reciprocating Saw made by Works Tools. And uh, we, we give with these things uh, one a week. So maybe it's worthwhile you being there. Uh, I know that the fellow that won last week's already got his saw. Mm. Yes, he's, uh, he's been on Facebook today. Oh, Mike uh, Terrell says a few times he's been knocked out. He says white spots with sound like the bottom of a barrel. I didn't hear anything, <laughs> but I saw a lot of white dots. And the white dots were on the left and the red dots, no, the red dots were on the left and the white dots were on the right. I don't know what that means. I don't either. Okay. So, uh... Kelton says he saw some fawns this week. Hmm. Interesting already, and that's okay. What's the gestation? 270 days, something of that nature? Is it that long? I think it is. 270 days. Deer. Uh, gestation. Pregnancy period, whatever. But And here's a tip. Don't, uh, if you see a fawn uh, and you don't see the mama... Don't think for a minute she's not there. She just doesn't like you. But she's there, and the fawn is just fine. Because I remind you that white-tailed deer in Georgia are owned by the state of Georgia. And uh, Shane says that the uh, gestation or pregnancy period, birthing period, is seven months. Seven times three. Okay, something like that. Seven months. Seven months. Okay. Uh, oh, Wayne says they miss you on Saturday mornings, honey. That's nice. Yes, it is. Yes. I miss y'all too. Yeah. She does, but she there's doesn't miss the sleep. Do. There's nothing for me to do anymore. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's just kind of debilitating, really. So, uh, beyond that, uh, all right, keep put the plug in the boat. Uh, use uh, corn to catch fish. Uh, don't go to the wrong huddle. <laughs> Be sure and check all your gas lines and so on. And finally, one of the final tips is, which I tell you every week, uh, please, uh, boat gas and alcohol does not mix. Uh, alcohol and hunting range doesn't mix. Alcohol and hunting doesn't mix. The use of a firearm with alcohol doesn't mix at all. There is no excuse. Gasoline goes in cars and lawnmowers. Right, yeah. And, and boats. And boat. It goes in the boat, but not... No, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I had something else. Okay. But I can't remember what it is. It's typical. I forgot. Uh, Let me straighten this up. Is this not straight? Oh, well, there you are. It's a little bit it's straight. It's been a little bit out of focus all day. I wonder I why that is. Yeah. I know. It was that fall down the steps. I've been out of focus ever since. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. Okay, so in just a, a short leak, we're going to hear the little ding-dong. And, okay. And we will not be you know, considering any other entries. Okay. For the saw. For the saw. <clears throat> so if, you, if, you're, if Karen... Houston picks your name. Mm -hmm. You need to get in touch with us. You have two weeks to oh. do it, but you need to get in touch with us right away. You need to contact Houston mm -hmm. at O'NeillOutside.com. Let me do that again. If we if we get if we pick you for the Saw Award, a reward prize, go to and uh, send an email with your name and address, shipping address to Houston at 
O'NeillOutside.com. And we will promptly uh, send you the saw. It's a works axis saw. Uh, I need some more of those blue lights. Oh, that's that blue thumbs. Is that what that is? Yeah. Every once in a while I see a red one. What is what is that? The red one is the love thing. Oh well, I can st I can stand okay. that too. Okay. So so now that means um, we're not going. We're going to pick the we're going to pick the winner and tell everybody who it is, sure. and shortly and tell you how to be in touch so that you can have the saw delivered. Uh, the princess is watching. I see. Yes, indeed, the princess is watching. Uh, Miss uh, White Shoulders. Mm -hmm. Jean is watching, and Charlotte Jean? was watch hey, watching. Everybody, and Ronnie was watching, and we're waiting on uh, Miss Houston to tell us who the winner is. Okay, so all right. She, she you know, it's be... Monday. Yeah. A week from today is Memorial Day, isn't it? It is. Uh, we'll be. Will we be on the air next week? I don't know. It depends on what. I don't know. I'll let you know. I don't. Uh, I, I, I'm going to. Next, if I'm on next week, I'm going to have a more structured broadcast. I'm going to have things that matter to you, okay? Now, in today's show, I was going to tell you how I was going to stop lying, and I just did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to think of something. Uh, uh, I haven't told a lie all day. Okay, Give and the, uh, it's, uh, all right, working. it's 701, it's time for us to be notified of uh, yes. well, she's, who the winner she's is. She's she, Is she? Okay. She's working on it. I'll let you know, stay right there, okay. and then I'll be, in, then you need to be in touch with us okay. if you're the winner. Okay. I'm and the winner is? Is uh, Roy Smith. Lloyd Smith. No, no, Roy. R -O. Roy. Roy Smith. Right. Roy, if you're still on, which you should be, be in touch with 2 Houston at O'NeillOutside.com. Roy Smith. And you won the works reciprocating saw. So. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did. Uh, what are we having tonight? Beef roast? You can have leftover beef roast. Leftover? Or I'll, we'll grill that uh, salmon. Grilled? I think I'll have the... I like the beef roast. Okay. That was really and good. And guess what you're going to have for dinner? Beef roast. Right. Okay. All right, everyone. Be safe throughout the week. Be sure and join us Saturday morning on WSB Radio AM 750 and FM dial of 95.5. And uh, listen to the radio program. You can call in and uh, uh, be a part of the program, and we can chat about it. We can talk hunting and fishing, encourage each other, and uh, talk about things, how to be safe, and how to enjoy the outdoors even more. I feel like we've, left, we've forgotten something. Have we forgotten something? I don't know. Did well, we? I guess not. Uh, you can go to O'Neill Outside and register for the newsletter. And you get a newsletter every week. It's a video newsletter. Uh, and it's kind of like this, but better. <laughs> Roy uh, acknowledged that uh, oh. he says he's a top fan, and he has said thank you and sure be in touch because you'll enjoy. This is good stuff. This works too. It's really good stuff. But you think you've forgotten something? We've left, we were supposed to talk about something that we did not. But I guess not. We'll think of it between now and next week. God, I hope so. Okay. The, the, light, the lights, you know, is the air conditioning on everything else? Yeah, yeah. everything's good. It's, okay. uh, it's, so I guess you can say good night. It's first. time to eat. So uh, I will see you guys Saturday morning. Uh, oh, you can watch O'Neill outside on Fox Sports Network. Uh, and Carbon TV and Waypoint TV and and own and podcast and all that kind of stuff. All right, here you are. Okay. See y'all later.